This is Dr. Charles Parker, and you're listening to Core Brain Journal. It's a place where I connect both fresh discoveries and interesting different perspectives from advanced mind science with the realities of real people and everyday life down on Main Street. Well, welcome aboard, folks. Dr. Charles Parker here one more time, and we have an interesting opportunity to hear from a client this time, a person who was treated, and they were treated by a guest that we've had recently, uh, Dr. Chip Watkins, from uh, who works with Sinesco, who's the medical director down there. And uh, we wanted to, this happens to be a client that uh, Dr. Watkins has treated, and we're, we're not going to give his name. We're just going to call him Mark Trail. Love that name. And so, Mark, welcome aboard. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. So he's an anonymous person, but he's a client. And he's, he's willing to come on board. And I think it's very interesting because what we can do is get the client patient side of what goes on with these different tests. And one of the tests that we really want to dig into, Mark, with you is urinary neurotransmitter measurement. It's we can actually measure neurotransmitters by by urinating in a cup and sending it out, and that's what Sinesco does. So let's start all the way back. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Mark, where you got into this whole thing. Did you actually have a depression, or what was you what were you being treated for? Sure, sure. Um, I was originally, well, how the whole thing started is, you know, as a college student, um, I uh, was having some some trouble focusing. Um, had had trouble focusing kind of my whole life, but um, never really. Uh, my parents really didn't believe in you know uh, seeing or you know not seeing the doctor, but uh, being prescribed medication or or that kind of thing. So it just kind of uh, you know kind of skipped on by. But then in college, I went um, and saw a doctor, and um, they said, "Boom, you have ADD, ADHD, or I, I believe it was ADHD," um, and you know, so I got stuck on um, Adderall, uh, and, uh, and that that worked for a little while. And you know, I, I felt like that was definitely helping me um, with with my studies. But um, just over time, it was uh, it felt as if it was losing its um, effectiveness. Um, I found myself needing um, a higher dose. Um, started having some addictive tendencies to it. Um, and it just wasn't, uh, wasn't working anymore. So I had to go back to the doctor and this is, you know, maybe, oh gosh, a year after or a year or so after I'd been on, um, and had my dose increased. Um, and that was really working for me, but it was also, um, making me really anxious. Um, and then one day I remember just having a crazy long day. Um, and just uh, coming home and just not being able to, to calm down. I had taken, I believe, even more than my um, my, my prescribed dose uh, just because of how big of a day it was and um, and also because, well, it's, it was the stuff's addictive, I'll just say that. Um, and uh, I came home and just started freaking out, could not calm down. My heart rate was through the roof, and... Um, my girlfriend at the time thought I was having a heart attack and we went to the emergency room and, um, turns out I was having a full blown panic attack. Thankfully, nothing seriously was wrong, um, with my heart or anything like that. But, and that was kind of where I came to a, you know, came to a, you know, a, a, it just hit a wall and it's like, you know, this is, this is not, this is, this is not good. This is not working. Um, so I started the long road, um, to, to recovery, um, and just got off the Adderall cold turkey. And at the time, um, was introduced to, to Dr. Watkins. Uh, I want to interrupt you for just a second right there, because I want to catch that speed bump in the road of your life and amplify it on a little bit, because, uh, some of our audience are concerned. Uh, I think the whole issue of addiction it sounds like you were using it incorrectly and it sounds like you at were at that time yeah yeah you were using it more now when you i want to make sure you clarify for us and for me personally did you feel you were addicted to it what was the situation with that what was your observation of yourself regarding that medication 
Yeah, I most definitely did and would consider myself um, having been um, a, a addicted to it. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely was. Well, why would you? I don't, I don't know the severity, but well, I just I would, yeah, I would say that I had definitely had some addictive tendencies for sure. Point of clarification: What were those tendencies? What was actually going on with you that made you reach that conclusion that you were concerned about yourself? Well, I mean. It really wasn't until I had the panic attack where I was like, I need to, you know, make a life life change. Um, but I mean, I can just remember, you know, just thinking like, oh, thank God, like I got my, you know, my monthly prescription filled. Like I don't know what I would do, you know, like without my without my, my medication. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and like would like save up, you know, like oh, I can skip some today and have extra tomorrow. You know, just not normal stuff like that. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah. So what was going on as you were using it incorrectly, and then you were, in, in the process of using it incorrectly, you were then beginning to worry what was going to happen when you crashed or you didn't have it and something came up that you right. really needed to. Yes. All right. So that feels right. like addiction, but you weren't physiologically mm -hmm. addicted. What you were doing was I don't think so. I don't you, you were actually in a situation of recognizing the usefulness of it, but it sounds like you also did overuse it. And at times you were using it incorrectly, which led to the anxiety. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah, most definitely. All right. I got you. So then you hit, you hit a bottom, you hit a definite speed bump and you, you felt bad about it. Let me ask you another question before we get into Dr. Watkins work with you. Were you crashing on that medication in the afternoon? Were it, when you took it, it lasted for a certain period of time in the afternoon, were you hitting the deck hard? Were you, depressed, angry, or apathetic and indifferent yeah, in the afternoon? Mostly, yeah, mostly very, very, very irritable. Um, whenever the effects kind of wore off, um, just kind of mad. And it, you know, definitely bled over into my relationships at the time, um, having some negative impacts there. Thankfully now, I mean, me and uh, the girlfriend at the time, now my fiance, um, you know, she says I'm a totally different person um, mm -hmm. on and on and off the, the, the medication. Yeah, um, the, those medications so I've done, I'm, I'm with you on that. The reason I asked is because what you're describing is a very common problem with stimulant medications if a person has a inherent neurotransmitter imbalance in that the dopamine, uh, you know, putting the dopamine um, collector on the dopamine reuptake inhibitor. I'm trying to stay away from the technical term, but basically what happens, it, it actually shifts down the serotonin and amplifies underlying serotonin issues. So the person becomes more sensitive, angry, and irritable. And that can occur through the day or it can occur most especially in the, in the afternoon. It happens so often for me. I, I do take care of uh, individuals with ADHD and uh, I call it the wily coyote effect, you know. <laughs> they just drop into the cavern in the afternoon. So, and that makes it bad. It definitely does. So then now we're into, you were feeling bad, you were having these different difficulties, and then you had a chance to consult with uh, Dr. Watkins. So what happened then? Yeah, and he suggested um, that I get, you know, my neurotransmitters assessed actually to see um, you know, where my various neurotransmitters were um, to try to get an idea of, you know, maybe why this panic attack has happened or yeah. potentially why, um, you know, I have, I've had focus issues in the past. Um, and I, I did the, uh, did, his, did his assessment and um, results came back. Uh, I was pretty, pretty deficient in a lot of, uh, a lot of neurotransmitters. The big ones, you know, serotonin and dopamine for sure was uh, in the basement. Well, stop right there because I think this is interesting now. Um, I didn't know this. I mean, you know, this is an interesting point. And one of the reasons I got into neurotransmitter testing myself is because we didn't really have a clear idea of what was going on. And to actually be able to assess a person clinically and understand what those neurotransmitters were with the urine test was pretty amazing. I mean, it's, there's a, a lot of literature on it, but it still seems a little bit edgy. And you now are an informed consumer, but we have a lot of public out there that's like, what are you talking about? Uh, neurotransmitter testing. Could you tell us a little more about 
how that testing took place for you, Mark. Yeah, it was it was very simple. Um, he just pretty much just gave me a kit and told me to collect my uh, second urine of the day um, in, in this tube and freeze it and uh, ship it off um, to, uh, to Tonesco. And um, then they, they, you know, I got, got the results back sometime later. And um, it was a very easy process. Yeah, is, is, is that what you're asking? Yeah, and, and yeah, I am. And I was just waiting for you to take a breath because I was going to ask you this other question. What's the second urine of the day? Now, I mean, I know that, but I, I think it'd be good for you to say what it was for you and, and so people know what's going on with it. Yeah, so Dr. Rockin said um, to not uh, take your first sample. Um, so, like, when, when I first got out of bed, I went to the bathroom, and then um, that was my first urine of the day, and then to take the second urine of the day. And I think it's something to do with the concentration um, of that first sample, why, why they need the second one. Mm -hmm. Good. So then... So then he looked at it, and you had uh, two main neurotransmitters. It's interesting because what you are describing is what I was just addressing a moment ago clinically with the drop in the afternoon because we frequently see when both serotonin and dopamine are compromised that a person has these odd, unpredictable reactions to what otherwise, from a clinical point of view, would seem like the correct medication. But if you don't really understand the serotonin side of it, then you have these unpredictable and really to, to uh, underline what you said, potentially addictive uh, problems. We've seen people become quite addicted when they didn't know what to do with that drop in the afternoon and think that they really needed more of the stimulant. They needed more Adderall instead of correctly identifying what it was with the drop in the afternoon being more serotonin related. So then when you got the testing done with Dr. Dr. Watkins, you, you became an informed consumer, which is really what I think is really good for everybody. If you're, I don't think it needs to be routine, but certainly if you're having a problem and you're a relative treatment failure, it's time to pull back the covers and see what's going on. Yeah, most definitely. It definitely sparked my interest and actually did um, quite a bit of research myself on the on the area because I was at two at the time like what like what is this you know why didn't my doctor um, you know do this initially when I first had uh, you know my problem to begin with um, and it led me to look into all different sorts of nutraceuticals and, and and things that have really helped me out a lot. So then let's go more precisely and uh, are you willing? to share those results so we could put them on the show page. Is that going to work for you, Mark? Yeah, yeah, that should, that should work fine. All right. So if you can send them to me, then I'll, I'll make a, a JPEG of them and show notes so we can talk about them and people listening can go look at the results and see what they were. But tell me a little more precisely because I haven't obviously seen them. Uh, you were low on serotonin. You were low on dopamine. Did you have any others that were, that were in the tank? Yeah, GABA particularly was pretty pretty low. Um, if I remember correctly, norepinephrine as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think epinephrine too was a little low. I was I was pretty low in in in, in a lot of the oh, pretty that's much all of the neurotransmitters. Very very interesting. So so then, uh, what did Doctor Watkins do with that protocol? Now, I mean, and, and when we say this, I want to warn the audience that. You know, there's no cookie cutter solution here. Every person uses these medication, these supplements. I mean, they're really like medications because they fix the person, but they're not medications. But they do have a profound effect and can can work. So, let's talk a little bit about what those um, uh, neurotransmitter. Uh, they're actually neurotransmitter precursors. I'm trying to think of a different way to say it, but that's what they are. They're actually the, the things that form neurotransmitters, probably, I'm guessing. Is that what, is that what he used? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. He used uh, Tonesco formulas um, that contained, yeah, like you said, uh, precursors, I believe, and then some other ingredients, I think, to help, help with the, the function. Um, but mostly, I think, for the synthesis, like you were saying, of the actual neurotransmitter. 
So that's an important differentiation. You just said something. It, it shows how knowledgeable you are with your research that you've done. Because synthesis yeah. is one thing, and then the cofactors that actually help the synthesis from a different level uh, and, and other um, cofactors that can help with other neurotransmitters that would balance the, those imbalances. Let's talk a little bit about what the specific neurotransmitter precursors were. Do you, do you know anything about that? I do. Yep. I actually have um, the, uh, the, the list I had which was taking right here. Yep. So let's tell, let's tell listeners a little bit about that if you can. Sure, sure. So Dr. Watkins um, initially started me on um, some inhibitory neurotransmitter support. Um, so uh, that would be for serotonin and for GABA since I was low in both of those. Okay, let's um, stop for just a second because people may not know what inhibitory means. I'm getting really basic. Pardon me for interrupting you. But, <laughs> but folks, there are excitatory neurotransmitters, inhibitory neurotransmitters. There are a group of neurotransmitters that kind of, for, for one of a better expression, calm you down, and there are others that pick you up and bring you up. So go ahead with the inhi inhibitory neurotransmitter precursors. What were you talking about? There? Sure, yeah. And, and Dr. Watkins explained to me that, you know, the inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters kind of are antagonistic to each other. Um, in that, uh, you know, if I was low in the inhibitories, um, serotonin and GABA, that we would need to support those first um, to kind of, he described it as like building kind of a foundation um, to prevent any type of, you know, panic attacks um, or anxious feelings that I had been experiencing recently. Um, so he uh, started me on um, ProLint which mm -hmm. is a Sinesco formula, as well as Lintra. Um, and the ProLint um, had some 5-HTP, mm -hmm. which is a serotonin uh, precursor. Mm -hmm. And the Lintra had uh, L-theanine okay. and um, lactium. Lactium. So L-theanine is an amino acid that's really can very much settle you down and just for listeners, I mean, I happen to know a little bit about this. I don't know as much as Dr. Watkins does, but but they inhibit uh, glutamate. You know, theanine blocks glutamate, and as a result, uh, any, an excitatory uh, secondary effect from glutamate, theanine would help with that. And GABA, everybody knows, is a uh, you know a inhibitory neurotransmitter. So, so go ahead. What was that last one you mentioned? I didn't know about that one. So, yeah, I mean, and I don't know exactly um, what it is. He kind of described it as um, it's this really interesting, like, ingredient that was developed by the French that somehow acts on GABA receptors. It's, it's very unique in that aspect. Oh, okay. Um, and I actually went to their website and, and checked it out, but they, they market Lactium for the actual company, Lactium, um, markets it for like testing anxiety and focus and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so. good. All right. So, so you had those inhi inhibitory neurotransmitters. Yeah, a little bit of calming down before he hit the excitatory neurotransmitter group that would be relevant for ADHD. That's right. Uh, so then, so then, how long did he do that? Was that like a couple of weeks, a month? What happened? Oh, gosh, let's see. I think I was on. The ProLint and Lentra for about a month, mm -hmm. um, in which point I implemented, um, or he gave me um, ProSite D, yep. um, which is a uh, excitatory um, supplement. Okay, and so what what's in that one? Is that uh uh, a dopamine precursor? Is it L-phenylalanine or L-tyrosine or what? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, um, it actually has um, three um, three precursors. It has the, like you said, the phenylalanine. Um, it has the tyrosine. Yeah. And then it also has uh, macuna, mm -hmm. um, which uh, all of those support dopamine. It looks like on the different. In different ways. I got you. So then what happened? Then what was your reaction to that 
entire combo. Before we go there, did he keep you on the inhibitory as well when he put on the excitatory? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was still on those, but not quite as a hefty of a dose. Mm -hmm. um, and the gosh, I mean, the inhibitory support worked so well for me so fast. I almost was like anxious to get off of it. Like, I don't need this anymore. Like I feel, you know, way less anxious. Yep. Um, so um, I definitely tapered down on, on that, um, but I still, I, I still took it and I still take it, you know, to this, to this day. Um, but yeah, once I got started on the excitatory um, supplement, then that's kind of been my main, um, main go-to from, from heat, from, from there. Um, and an additional, and I mean, in addition to the, um, ProSite D, which is Sinesco formula, um, he also had me take some, um, DMAE, uh, it's, it's, a, a, a supplement and that's, that's really helped me a lot with my focus too. Um, I've kind of been taking the two together. Um, what's in that DMAE? I'm not familiar with that one. Um, it's a, it supports acetylcholine. Oh, okay. Um, yep. Yeah. So acetylcholine, folks, for those of you who don't know, is a really a memory enhancer. All the Alzheimer drugs are acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. They actually uh, diminish acetylcholine uh, acetylcholine breakdown. So acetylcholine is good for memory, and that's what that's what that one was. So it's another uh, in memory enhancer, cognition thinking enhancer, right? Yeah, most definitely, and that, that I feel like the the DMAE works very fast um, and quick um, when you when, when whenever I take it, um, it definitely helps with my focus. So I think I've got a pretty good um, handle on my on my focus now because of the Pro ID and the the DMAE. Um, so then, do you continue I, to take these? And so what's happening? It's it sounds like from a supplement point of view you are in a way doing what you would do with medications, but you have, you don't have the side effects because you've actually managed the entire um, complexity of the situation in a more effective way. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. I take, yeah, I, I take them like, you know, like I would, you know, my old meds um, and, you know, we were talking about earlier have some of the side effects yeah i really don't experience um any irritability or you know um crash um which is which is really nice yeah so what to just say it another way i mean the 5-htp gaba side of it took care of the drop and the dopamine DL phenylalanine, which is a precursor for dopamine as well, uh, those medications helped the cognitive function, which is what's going on with the medications in the first place. They're actually dopamine reuptake inhibitors. Uh, I mean, the Adderall is, and basically what happens is it, it causes dopamine to accumulate in the synapses of the brain. Well, what, what's going on here is Mark was taking supplements that increased the neurotransmitters in the brain by actually helping with the synthesis and the balance of the uh, associated neurotransmitters that when he found them, when he actually did the testing, were unbalanced. So are you taking, what are you taking now? Are you continuing on the stimulant or are you, and, and not taking the inhibitory or what are you, what's going on with that? So right now, currently, I'm, I'm kind of taking the inhibitory as needed. Um, if I've had a particularly stressful day um, or just been feeling more anxious, I'll take um, take the inhibitory support um, kind of in the evening just to chill me out. Um, and then in the day, I don't take it every day, but um, I usually take the, the ProSite D and the DMAE um, in the in the morning slash afternoon um, to uh, to help with my focus. Mm -hmm. And that's not every day. It's kind of as needed. There's some days where I feel like, oh, I don't, you know, I'm feeling pretty fine. I don't really need need it today. And then there's other days where I'll, where I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting. You know, everybody has a different way of approaching it. And, and uh, it sounds like, you know, certainly going on and off of it doesn't make as much a difference 
because you don't have quite the um, a marked effect that you have with a uh, straight medication. And so going on and off, you don't have the ups and downs. You have a rel relatively smooth um, glide path. Is, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not like make or break now that I've um, been on it for a while. If I miss it, it's not like I notice it significantly, um, you know, Whereas mm -hmm. if I had missed, you know, like an Adderall dose, I would have been freaking out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Well, that is very interesting. So you're, you're a different guy then. You, you now, oh, yeah. you, you're actually better able to focus. You've actually, yep. with this intervention system that Dr. Watkins has, has designed with you, based on good biomedical evidence. And, yeah, I'm saying that emphatically because... I think that is the change that's going on in psychiatry. I mean, there's so many different points of evidence that all of us can appreciate if we get into it. It's just a question of actually jumping over to that side and looking more carefully, you know, peeking under the hood as opposed to just running in and, and putting the keys in the, in, the, in the car and just cranking away and hoping that it runs. So are you there? Yes. You fell silent. I didn't know. <laughs> you probably thought I was going to go ahead and deliver a lecture or something, you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> Sorry about that. I get a little carried it. away with this. <laughs> but anyway, well, listen, Mark, is there anything else you want to add uh, that you would think would be useful? Any closing remarks? We've covered a little quick clinical review from a person who's actually had some significant changes in his life without psychiatric medications for an all too common problem of focus and concentration. So do you have anything, any closing remarks you want to add for our audience there, Mark? Yeah. I mean, I would definitely say I'm um, very thankful that um, I met Dr. Watkins when I did. It was kind of a godsend. Um, and that uh, I'm, like you said, a totally, totally different person. Um, than I am today. I'm um, engaged to the love of my life. Um, relationships going a million times better. Um, and uh, yeah, I I don't want to know what my life would have looked like <laughs> if I hadn't <laughs> have, cool. uh, encountered this. Well, that's really fantastic. I just appreciate it. And on behalf of uh, our listeners, you know, it's difficult as a client to come in and talk about this stuff, but you've, you've obviously done your homework. You're You've actually yeah. taken a little more time. I think that's something that we need to give you a long distance high five on because, you know, we <laughs> see so many individuals that we try to take care of and they get into a passive mode with their medical professionals, you know, just take care of me and give me whatever I need to get. And then they wind up being unhappy because none of the meds really work uh, consistently or you have there, there are a lot of different things that we have to do to to get the medications and combination of supplements, the whole thing to work correctly and and we frequently with if the if the patient if the person if the client whatever you want to call that other person if they're not on the team and if they're not really doing the homework that you obviously have done then we just wind up not playing with a full deck it really requires an individual like yourself to come in and say what the problems are so that we can actually on the medical side listen to it correct it, find out what's going on and actually investigate more thoroughly if a person is having a problem. It's just as simple as that. So thank yeah. you very much. I'm going to wind it up, and, and uh, but I, I don't know if I'll let you get that word in edgewise. Is there anything else you want to add before we close up? I think, I think that about covers it, uh, yeah. Um, very, very happy with, <laughs> with uh, the discovery of, uh, of this, uh, this kind of new world. Um, that I've since been very, very passionate about, for sure. Well, it's easy to be passionate about it because, and it is a new world, and I think people are looking for a little hope out there. And what we're talking about, listeners, is is not going to work for everybody. We're not taking a position of uh, cookie cutter. We're not a cookie cutter on the medicine side. We're not a cookie cutter on the uh, supplement side. The question is, there are no cookie cutters. The only cookie cutter is is the need for finding out what the evidence is and responding to the, the black and white biomedical evidence with, with good testing. And, and I want to thank you for sharing that with us. And I know that people are going to be looking forward to seeing, seeing your results on the show notes. Great. 
So thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it. Of course. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to Core Brain Journal. We're working every day behind the scenes to bring you reports that connect research benches with those street trenches. Here we share the complexity of mind science because, as you know, details really do matter. One of the most pervasive misunderstood challenges is how commonplace medications like those written for ADHD are used so regularly without clear guidelines. If you think you'd like more specifics, take a minute to download my two-page PDF packed with video links and references on the absolute essentials of how to start ADHD medications. They're easily available at corebrainjournal.com forward slash start. Thanks for listening. Do connect and stay tuned. Together we can make a difference.